Caitlin Clark is the only player in the history of the WNBA to average 17 points and 8 assists per game in their rookie season. In fact, of all the rookies who averaged at least 17, Clark is almost doubling the next highest dime thrower, and this list is a murderer's row of Hall of Fame players. And it's fitting that she broke the record for assists in a game last night because, despite her long-range bombs getting most of the attention, it's her passing that makes her entire game so good. It's not enough to point at Clark's gaudy assist totals and assume she's a great passer. No, the reason why she's so good is because she doesn't just generate good looks for her teammates, she generates layups. A lot of layups. Very few players in the history of this game could do this so consistently. Magic Johnson comes to mind, and when you realize how easy she's making the game for the players around her, you understand better why she's so hard to guard. We've got a textbook three on two fast break and watch how Clark takes one last hard dribble to the basket to pull the defender towards her and then wraps the ball around her body. Make no mistake, this is the best way to deliver this pass so the ball is protected from the defense and creates a layup and one. Just look at how much chaos she creates when the ball is in her hands in the perimeter. For some reason, Kalani Brown goes to the shooter Kelsey Mitchell even though there's already a defender there, and Monique Billings is so scared of a 40-foot skip pass that she leaves her assignment and gives up the easy two. Check how Clark creates just the slightest bit of a better angle by leaning to her right to sneak this bounce pass around her defender on the sideline out of bounds play, a one-handed pass that leads the cutter perfectly into the layup before help can get there. But it's the pick and roll where she's most dangerous. We've seen her burn drop coverage a lot and nail tough threes off the dribble from way downtown. But she's only shooting 33% from behind the arc and slightly better when getting a ball screen. The first look when coming off that screen is the defender here. Clark knows her primary defender is stuck behind the screen and the screener's defender is now directly in front of her. She's concerned with where the weak side help is. Watch how she glances at her teammate in the corner with the slightest ball fake in that direction and see what the help does? She has to lean in that direction to her right for a step and that's all Clark needs to thread the needle to Melissa Smith for yet another layup. And she commands so much gravity that no less than three defenders surround her out top when she comes off that screen. The first check going to the left is this defender, who is strangely way too close to a poor shooter. Clark knows the pocket pass will be open if she can control the screener's defender. The fear of a deep three going to her left is very real, and Clark gets McGowan to slightly wave at her. And that's all she needs as she bounces the ball right next to McGowan's feet, hitting the roller in stride for the easy two. Against the aces, she checks this defender to see where she is. At least this is Kelsey Mitchell, a good three-point shooter, but it also means Clark knows the pocket pass will be open with no help because the screener's defender has to step up to stop the shot. The no look was a nice add-on as her teammates continue to get easy buckets. We should mention her off-the-dribble shooting is what gets all the clicks, and only four other players in the history of the WNBA have shot as many threes per game as Clark. Certainly, we haven't seen someone take this many pull-ups from so far away, and despite having a below average percentage, the threat is very real and forces the defense to bend itself out of shape to contest no matter what. You'll notice that most of her makes are when she is going to her left, which is very common for most right-handed shooters since it naturally places the shooting hip and elbow in line with the basket. However, there is plenty of evidence that she can hit them going to her right even if she has an arm swing biased toward her left side. While her arm swing up may seem a little bit unconventional, it's a big reason why she's so successful. And it's the same kind of unconventionality you'll get from using the internet browser Opera, the faster, safer, and smarter browser. They've got an incredible AI feature built right into the interface. And it's been very helpful as I continue to formulate an answer to the question that's on everyone's minds right now, who will win this series? And if you're like me, you end up with hundreds of tabs open in a confusing mess. With Opera's Tab Islands, you can now arrange your tabs into separate islands based on related topics, like all the box scores in a certain series. This is a game changer for me as I can finally keep straight all the different teams and their games. You can also expand, collapse, or rearrange them to save more space. 
I think the best feature is their built-in VPN for free and unlimited private browsing across the internet. So click the link in the description below and download Opera so you'll be focused on what matters. Where Caitlin was getting in trouble early in the season is when they'd blast her with a double team out of the pick and roll. She's averaging over five and a half turnovers a game, which is on the high side, and we can see that she really struggles with immense pressure. Curiously, I've been seeing less and less blitzing despite the clear success defenses were getting from it, and I don't really have an explanation other than bad preparation and coaching. There's another reason why she's racking up turnovers, however. Getting back to her passing, it's so good that sometimes her teammates aren't expecting the ball. This whole season is filled with fumbled catches that somehow end up being a turnover on Clark, even though it's clearly the receiver's fault for not catching the pass. I'd like to think eventually they'll get used to it and her turnovers will go down, but it's still happening at least once a game where a nice dime gets thwarted by stone hands from her teammates and it's got to be frustrating as heck for Clark. Let's go through some of the clever ways head coach Christy Sides is getting Clark open. On this baseline out of bounds, they smartly have her set a screen first, making Christy Wallace the focus as the first cutter. I love that this becomes a handoff back to the inbounds while Wallace sets a brush screen for Clark who's coming off the cross screen at the free throw line. No way the defense can keep up with the sprinting Clark who can release this quick. Speaking of coming off screens, they have a variety of sets that get her off ball, making Clark more difficult to guard because you never know where she's going to attack from. The very basic pin down sees the sky trying to top lock this, and the added screening from the handoff gets her open enough to hop going to her more comfortable left side with the help stepping up way too late. They push the boundaries of the three second rule by having her wait in the lane looking like she wants to screen, but instead she gets a pin down into a flare screen to the left wing. Even with the switch, the defense cannot get there in time as she pirouettes into a splash. This set starts with a back screen for Clark as she cuts through and then flows into a double pin down for Kelsey Mitchell. Then another double pin down for Clark looping around. However, Mitchell makes a pass to the second screener, a mistake, but they make it work with a handoff as Clark again nails a shot going to her left. They miss her cutting open through the lane, but she quickly turns this into flex with a cross screen that flows into a pin down out top so she can go to her left, find the easy alignment, then let it fly. Having her shooter set a screen first is always a great idea to get her open, but watch how the cutter turns around and then screens for Clark. This forces a switch, and Clark can run the defender into a pin away at the top of the key. They smartly have her going to her left for this open catch and shoot, and it swishes. They will run this to the other side as well, and the cutter can curl off of Clark's first screen, which triggers Clark to come off this pin down. If the defender tries to shoot the gap, Clark will flare to the open spot and bury the open jumper. Here it is again, and if the defender chases around the screen and is able to stay close enough to thwart the jump shot going right, Clark has the lane open because her teammates are occupying the help with a pin down in the right corner, and I dig the inside hand reverse. I love this progression as the first cutter curls and then the ball is entered to the low post. I believe the post entry passer is supposed to set the split screen for Clark at the elbow, but it doesn't even matter as the first elbow screen was so good, she's wide open on the kick out and she hops into this quick release splash. We've been waiting for a player to come in that handles the ball so well, can shoot from deep like this, and throw dimes around the court with such crazy impact. I'm looking forward to the future of the women's game as more and more young girls study Clark's game and emulate it. But let's not forget who sparked this whole thing in the first place.